let's get those guns out. Let's look for that angle. There it is, roughly. Hello, the initiated. My name is Marcus Unicola, and today we're back here with another demo slash review. Again, heavy OST uh, product in question. Uh, this is Vento, as you can see, this uh, beautiful, lovely um, green. Uh, I'm looking for a word, but it's it's kind of like a soft, diluted green. Uh, Vento is a woodwinds library, and in typical heavy OST fashion, gives you this uh, evolved, processed uh, folder engine that takes those orchestral woodwind sounds and makes them into something uh, different. So a few things to cover. Um, Heavy OC have sent me this uh, copy. Uh, this was quite a while ago, so this is not related to any campaigns they're doing. I'm just really late on <laughs> checking it out, but thank you Heavy OST for uh, sending me this. Uh, that being said, as always, uh, all opinions, both in good and bad, are my own. Um, I haven't been asked just to say anything, so uh, it's all me, uh, both in positive and perhaps in criticism. We'll see. Um, what we're going to do today is pretty much what we do always. Is I try and go as uh, through as many presets as I possibly can, cover as much ground, just give you a general idea of what it sounds like, what kind of musical ideas it inspires in me, and show show you what's in there um, and how it actually you know works in practice and functions and, and sounds. And hopefully, I can you know come up with something uh, sufficiently inspiring uh, for you to to listen to. Uh, you'll only be hearing Vento. Uh, I only have a limiter on my master bus which should be extremely transparent, but I only have it to make sure that the level is okay for this video. I think that covers the basics. Um, what I thought is that I would actually learn uh, from previous lessons. And uh, I want to start, I want to structure this demo a bit differently because I don't think it's necessarily the best idea for my taste to, um, to, uh, start with the traditional kind of sampled sounds. I don't think these are uh, the strength of these orchestral libraries, maybe Novo, uh, Forzo, Vento. Uh, I love all the short note stuff from pretty much all of these. Uh, but I mean, these are in a league of their own when it comes to this evolved engine concept. So if I open up the browser here, you're going to see how this is structured uh open up vento this happens you got traditional which has the clarinets flutes high ensemble low ensemble then contrabass uh, ensemble and then you have this evolve folder which has the designer and the loop designer in there so uh i'm mainly going to go through the designer because that's really my favorite thing about this and the loop designer is kind of in that same category but it just has these pre made, pre-recorded, pre-designed loops. Uh, obviously you can tweak them to a certain degree, but uh, less so than with the designer. But with the designer you can play whatever you, you want. But I thought I would uh, just go through the evolved uh, designer first, and that's really the best way to demonstrate the best, uh, the brunt of the best of what I think is in here, uh, and then uh, jump at the end to the traditional maybe a few loops if we have time which reminds me let's put a timer on there uh and what else oh yes uh this is kind of a semi-blind um demo for me as well although i've had this for a moment i've only you know played with it for a short while tested out a few of these so this is pretty new for me as well uh um so I have played a few of these just randomly here and there, but I'm excited to jump in because I'm educating myself on what's actually in here as well so that I can apply this better in my own uh, music. But that's it, enough talking. Once you do open Evolved, 
and then I continue talking. But I need to explain this folder structure still. Uh, once you open up Evolved um, Designer, you have further folders in here, just like with Novo, Novo and Forzo, uh, you have organic ambient effects and textures, rhythmic. Uh, so let me do, I'll, mm, I'll try and do as many as I can, but uh, let's just, you know, plow through. Let's do organic. Here we go. <laughs> really good oh shit uh, yeah my neck is still doing that fucking annoying cramping so i might i ha might get those uh tweaks every now and then uh so if i am rubbing my head or my neck or twitching in pain it's because of that uh sorry about that yeah when i started playing here in this range i was kind of like mm, that seems pretty flat but this higher end is is beautiful and it, it kind of actually blends really nicely with the with the mids and the, the lower mids um and again this is like going with the traditional samples they're not uh because you don't have legatos uh it's they're not hyper realistic on their own but once they apply these to this beautiful engine uh it just comes alive like obviously the sounds processed it sounds like it has its own soundscape but it's uh it it it, it, it sounds realistic and and believable in its own context um which is really nice because a lot of the time you do want to have this cinematic soundscape and something sort of more developed and not necessarily hyper realism and, and this is why i really wanted to start with this because i think the you know for example that preset really proved it um proved the the concept but extremely pleasant uh, i love the the fluttering i love the 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 motion in there um next up <laughs> And by the way, I need to adjust the limiter every once in a while because all presets are uh, hitting slightly different levels. But uh, yeah. So if you hear a distortion, that's the limiter. It's not the, the library. Unless it's the library. But if it sounds nasty, it's not the library. If it sounds tasty, it's the library. Again, here we don't get like a super smooth realism but it, the processing the way it's scripted laid out makes it sound very very pleasant to listen to and I like the they've obviously recorded the sample of the the moving texture and they're really taking that putting it into this engine in a in a pretty beautiful way it sounds it, it has its own vibe has its own uh, feeling to it <laughs> Yeah, 
in the previous patch the low sounded really good and beefy and this one is the same. Let me actually uh, drop the gain on the limiter a couple of dB. actually really rekindling my love to woodwinds. I don't know what it is, but like we tend to, they tend to be overshadowed by strings in brass because they are, I, you know, strings are this beautiful, melodic, romantic thing and, or can be, and brass are, you know, big and, and hefty. But then woodwinds sort of come in the side, but every time I play with them, they're just so soulful, so, you know, sensitive and sensual and, and, uh, it just really speak to my soul and this is kind of rekindling my my <laughs> my love towards that uh, section of the orchestra so yeah really really nice um what was i going to say well up the, the limiter a bit again. My playing is so shoddy. I'll, I'll, I'll try and warm up. I'll try and get back to it. I have this excuse of a wrist, uh, which hasn't quite recovered from the operation. That's enough shoddy playing. Uh, um, yeah, really nice shorts. Uh, I think I, I, I dug into the traditional shorts before and I can't remember what I thought. I remember something being slightly disappointing to me, but could it be something else? But this, this, this sounds really good. Like these are uh, actually very, very, very usable and, and very, uh, there's also, also texture to it. To, uh, there's, um, there's a there's there's a vibe there's a feeling which is always nice uh what's up novice sage uh what workstation are you using uh keyboard uh so i, I guess you're referring to uh this boy here this is a dope for pk88 which is just like a high quality um piano midi keyboard very basic otherwise uh the keyboard is extremely good but basically has midi out midi in uh, and that's you know sustain pedal and that's it uh but it's not 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 like a workstation that would be more like a um you know like a that's a certain type of a keyboard with a lot of other other functions um uh, so yeah um i think we're let's go to this next preset
really interesting uh, one there. Kind of reminds me like a, of a harmonium, which is this kind of keyboard instrument that has the, the bellows which you have to uh, panel with your feet. Kind of has that same kind of nice texture. I really appreciate they recorded the samples of the, the fluttering textures, which was really the case with the Forzo as well. I, I really like those that they're in the samples because it's pretty hard to otherwise make it sound like that. But that that that's uh, super inspiring actually. Um, healing Rain. Here's the thing, like a lot of these instruments can have a lot of resonance, especially with these presets they build up. Uh, so you might get those distortion peaks every once in a while. Uh, yeah, that was kind of like a bit, not maybe the strong suit, that kind of sustained notes without any textures. Okay, so they have these samples that are doing the bit of those kind of dissonant uh, motions. So let's do something simpler. nice uh, I don't know if they do those through like the change in the lips and then you get those harmonics but really nice like if you keep it simple then obviously the harmonics won't clash with one another and that creates a nice mysterious vibe uh, novice novice sage says I need to learn how to use a doll yeah well there's a, there's a lot of uh, good stuff online for free um, yeah definitely I say the, the best platform for uh, doing anything creative musically really easy to explore new ideas and and uh yeah get something on on paper or hard drive hard to find a nice place for the limiter here but yeah beautiful patch again here the sustain notes are really nice and I suspect they're because they're specifically recorded with that texture creates that momentum uh, that movement which is really nice um, novice sage sage asks do you have any recommendations for free DAW uh, <laughs> no it's you don't need to shut up uh, let me work that's why I if I just need to do this, then I wouldn't be streaming, I guess. Um, yeah, if you're going for a free one, um, Reaper is really the... Well, obviously, that's not exactly free. Uh, I think uh, you do... I can't rem remember how the pricing goes on that. It's like a basic license, but it's like... It's really cheap. So... Uh, that's probably one you could look into with the DAW I'd say you know go with something that looks and feels right for you they're all pretty good uh, the modern ones um, also something you might want to look into is when you purchase let's say an audio interface which is something that most people want to be using or need to be using uh, some of those come with DAW software uh, I'm using Personus Studio One, which I think is for what I what I what I want to do right now, is um, is the best. Um, it's not free. Uh, it's not exactly cheap either. 
But yeah, uh, if you're going to buy an audio interface or a keyboard, some of those might come with a DAW. Otherwise, free ones. Reaper is really cheap. You can really customize it. So that's probably closest to a free one. And then if you're buying something, you might get a software with that. Um, otherwise, I can't really recommend anything. I, I don't really know. For me, Studio One was really the only choice I <laughs> I uh, came up with. So, uh, or that looked good for what I wanted to wanted wanted to do. So, um, yeah. Yeah, these kind of uh, sort of flatter sustains are are not the strongest thing here to my taste because they sort of sound a bit too flat. Uh, but again, here your compositional skill and your arrangement skill, because if you're if you're organizing what you're playing in a way that doesn't suit the instrument, then it's going to sound like shit, no matter how what the sound samples are like so again here if i move to this range and work with the sound it actually sounds really really pleasant but um yeah i really prefer those sustains with the movement because it creates a, a different realism these are that previous uh example was a bit bit sort of a bit too flat uh for my taste interesting cool one definitely has utility in certain places and again here down in the keyboard section you can see the blue zone which has the sh short notes and then you have these texture uh, ones in the in the orange but uh, these shorts sound really good Again, a pretty shitty um, orchestration here. Yeah, I mean, the mix is super beefy, sit in a very nice place. Uh, not hyper realistic, but definitely give you that uh, right tone. Really, yeah, really good stuff. The, uh, the effects also really nice but obviously they need their time and place but that's a really nice sample What I love about these split sections, for a number of reasons, but one of them is that it puts you in a, even if they trigger slightly different samples, slightly different textures, puts you in a different creative space and creates something slightly...
again here super inspiring i don't know what's going to happen as i dig into these and then i go okay oh that sounds interesting and just brilliant sampling brilliant mixing brilliant production just uh, stunning stuff That's a really good one. Super cinematic, ambient, beautiful textures. Oh, this is truly rekindling my love towards uh, woodwinds. Definitely still underusing them. Although I haven't worked orchestral stuff for a short moment, but yeah. Novi said, says, uh, as you play this, I can just imagine situational scenes from a movie. As our hero comes back to consciousness as his new bride sponges the caked blood and dirt from his face. Yeah, I mean, th that's a good start for a script. Yeah, I mean, these are super, super cinematic, um, real nice stuff. I think we're getting to the end of organic here. Uh, close. Yeah, I love those kind of moving uh, textures. Yeah, trill based one. Oh, crap, what is going on here? Again, another nice texture. It's very loud. Cool. Yeah, many of these, because you don't have super smooth legato, a lot of these, you know, benefit uh, or work best at least to how i would use them in a way that uh is sort of slower and sparse and simpler because as you start moving fast you begin to hear those differences in the transitions between notes and then it kind of loses realism maybe loses a bit of that capturing element but obviously that largely depends on how you what kind of music you actually write so ambient folder i'm probably going to love some of the stuff here but we'll uh we'll have to listen
Very nice. Very nice. Again, here, like, the the realism is uh, really good. Like, it's not hyper-realistic because we have reverbs, we have different production choices we've done, but in that context, that that is perfect. So soulful. That's, I guess, all I can say about that. <laughs> interesting stuff again perfect place for that you know that's good find a good place for that it's going to be perfect texture uh, sage says you can use it to uh, toggle your mic on and off yeah I don't know like um, maybe the foot pedal that could be useful but the thing is sometimes they don't engage and then I can't see if they're engaged or not so I actually prefer to have it here and also I can adjust the gain on the fly and it, you know uh, it seems to seems to be a bit uh, uh, better for me. Also, I could do it digitally here, but uh, this has been working uh, pretty nicely. texture really really beautiful I actually think that that is the default that opens up from this folder to readjust the limiter there. stuff this is the to me the heavy austi perfection like it's yeah it's just that's just write some music with that and you're done yeah that is beautiful so beautiful um uh novice asks what is that you're using this is a an eventide mixing link so it's a mic preamp with a bunch of other functions it's like a like a guitar in a guitar pedal format so you can obviously mute it from here you could run it through a bunch of different things um but yeah it's, it's a great quality mic pre uh a, a ton of gain sounds really good uh is relatively cheap compared to well once you start thinking what's actually in there 
but uh, it's really good. But yeah, it works really well for this kind of streaming stuff. Um, uh, depending on your setup, but I wanted to have something that mutes the mic in between here because obviously you, you'll otherwise get some bleed through the mic. Um, so I want to I want you to hear what's actually uh, just coming out of the the library. But yeah, it's a it's a good little preamp if you need this kind of form factor, and it's a uh, uh, really good quality. Yeah, Eventide is the is the brand. Really interesting sound. That's almost like an organ uh, type of thing. Obviously, you have to be careful of the the buildup of the resonances. This is often the case with woodwinds. They can really pile up to a certain place and be overbearingly resonant. But then you can use something like Soothe from OEK Sound to just clamp things down. Beautiful. Interesting combo of the kind of pre recorded motion and a filter. Again, crazy good. Really right down my alley. Beautiful. Yeah, super nice. Really interesting processing there. so inspiring like a simple creative idea but giving it to someone else and I, I'm just going blindly into these and being like oh that's an interesting idea and wow like that's a really really cool one
These are flooring me. <laughs> they are so good. Super lovely textures. Starting to repeat myself, but these were super, super solid. Uh, oh, one more left. Uh, Sage. Um, uh, yeah, it's an Eventide mixing link. That's the name. Uh, Mike preamp with effect loop. Yeah, but mixing link is the name of the unit. Eventide is the the brand. These ambient ones are crazy good. That is so good. Oh, what did I do? Oh crap. I don't know why that popped up. Uh, effects and textures. I'm not gonna go through all of these, because, I mean, fuck. We're gonna be here all day otherwise. Uh, let's do a few. Let's do Benning Sanity. Sounds crazy enough. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, they do these really, really, really well. Yeah, so special stuff, obviously, horror, other kind of things. Um, something down there. Let's do that one. Yeah, top notch. Top tier stuff. Let's do uh, the Stanley. Cool. Yeah, good things. Uh, ooh, rhythmic. I think I want to do all of these. There aren't too many. And uh, these are probably most important for me so well I mean the ambient ones are are pretty cool as well but
Okay, that's uh, an S tier vibe anticipation builder. That's really good. I love how they, they they nailed that subtle tone. Like there's pressure, there's weight, but there's an anticipation, and and that kind of subtlety is is extraordinarily well done. <laughs> So there, the, with the bend, pretty hard to introduce um, harmony, but... You could build something cool with that. how many of these aren't so upfront or you know crazy in your face uh, really gives you a little more options to work with like sometimes you want it that well, you want the tension the movement but not something that's blaring in your face and many of these nail that uh, um, um, nail that tone <laughs> good again um, I love the the subtlety of it That's going straight into the soundtrack that I'm working on. Really um, serves nicely, nicely that kind of soundscape. up the limiter a tiny bit. Absolutely stunning.
it's truly unique. Really unique sound design. Brilliant. Pretty aggressive, but calm it down a bit. That'll be great. Again, the subtlety. It, it's so tastefully done. So much tension, movement, richness, but it's it's right there. It gives, and it, like, from a composer standpoint, gives you so much room to work with because that gives you ten. As a composer, you you need to put things in that get the message across, but aren't overly uh, overbearing. Really nice the the baseline on that one. Nice kind of chip tunish. Brilliant combination of great samples and just brilliant sound design in this engine. <sighs> yeah. See you later, Nova Sage. Uh, thanks for tuning in once again. Uh, go be productive. Have a great day, dude. Again, that's so good. The, the, the processing, the sequencing has done been done so amazingly. Combined with that, those samples, it's... It's stupid.
so good. It started out and it was like, eh. But then you have these things coming in and moving. Oh, it's like like such a uh, feast of uh, textures and, and movement. Again, another cinematic, uh, brilliant preset. Um, again, the subtlety, so tasteful. Okay, Mike was muted. We're already in a different folder, uh, so we did it. Oh crap, uh, we did it. Got through the evolved uh, designer thingy. So, just quickly touching on um, the evolved loop designer. The loop, basically, I'm just going to play a few here so you get the gist of it, but you already heard the sound of the designer, so these are in that kind of same, um, what should I call it, same uh, sound design style, but these are loops, so here's one. So yeah, you have these different layers which play back loops. Then in the red zone, you choose the key and therefore you can change the key. Obviously, well, I'm not going to jump into these because, I mean, there's a lot to go through, but you get the gist of it. There's a pre-made loop, uh, some kind of pattern usually. Some of them are more melodic, uh, harmony intensive than others, and some are less. And I prefer the less because it means I can have more malleability but you get the idea. That being said, these loops are stunningly designed. They sound amazing. They are very inspiring and they are extremely malleable in the world of, you know, pre-made loops. So uh, what I love about them is that they're tastefully simple enough so that you can, you know, shape them into what you want to be after. Um, uh, so, and I've said this before, Heavy OST does loops in the best possible fashion, in my estimation, because they're um, musically flexible enough that you can take them into different directions. They are sparsed out into these different key areas, so you can play some of them, not play some of the <laughs> some of the others. Uh, so, yeah, they do the best that I know, um, but. Um, But yeah, you get the idea. Just world-class stuff. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, really, really amazing. So let's wrap this up with the traditional. Um, first off, clarinet. Uh, so again, here you got your range in the blue. You got your uh, selection of the expression or style of, of playing that you want to be using and you can change them here from the red keys or you can just click here or press on the keyboard it's up to you uh long sustain clarinets we're gonna have to bump the volume here quite a bit because they are very much quieter
So the sustain itself is nice, obviously, you know, legato, so, you know, it <laughs> transitions aren't hyper realistic or smooth. Uh, but again, great sustain on its own. Again, I make the wish of um, that I said on Forzo that I wish they could go back into these engines. They have these great samples, so if they can figure out how to program this engine to make those samples work in Legato, that would be wonderful. It would make these even even more of a no-brainer uh, sample library. But um, yeah, <laughs> if they can. If they could do that, that would be amazing. But uh, from what I've gathered about sampling, it might not be as simple. Maybe there is a tech wizardy scripting programming way of doing it. But from what I've gathered, you some you know preferably would need to record the transitions between the legatos and then bake them in. But again, that's my wish. If they can do it, do it would be amazing. Uh, staccato clarinets. I think it's the strongest here in the sort of its lower range. This gets a bit sort of more resonant -y and, and, and and boxy. And here I prefer to play quieter and then just raise the level. I, I prefer the texture there, uh, but it's extremely playable. This is really good, the, the low end. Uh, it gets a bit, I don't know how to describe it otherwise, but it's a, um, a bit choked up here, uh, but um, that's uh, obviously my taste. Uh, let's do really quiet sustains. nice texture again kind of the same thing as with the sustains um, flutes uh, let's actually see if yeah let's do flutes long sustain These are actually more playable. Let me I'll just revisit this one. Yeah, you can definitely hear the transitions more here. I don't know what they've done here with the flutes. First of all, the texture is wonderful. There's a bit of those that kind of um, um, drift, I guess, that kind of uh, slight pitch uh, drift in the sample, which makes it nicer. But the transitions are smoother. I could actually really work with this without any major issues. Uh, but th that's a wonderful texture. Yeah, that's a lot better. Staccato. It's very quiet. Bump up the gain.
So the top end is definitely the best. There's a bit of a lag here when I play. It doesn't quite hit the way I want, and some of the dynamics pop out a bit more, not to, in my estimation, in relation to my actual dynamic playing. So it's a bit, gets a bit kind of slow and uneven here. And also there's a limit to how loud it gets there. Uh, it's kind of really like dynamically capped there. Yeah, again, a lot better. The sustain work, uh, sustains work a lot better on the flute. And a lovely texture there. Okay, high ensemble. I don't actually know how they've... Uh, how they define it. I guess it's all of the woodwind section, but just they've made choices of where the overlaps are. And then you have, you know, a higher woodwind section. Um, these were actually uh, really good. The ensemble patches in, in Forzo, so I'm interested in seeing what this sounds like. And that's exceptional for me to say because I never use ensemble patches because they tend to be too generalized, not specific enough to my taste. So. Again, I, I really like this. Uh, I would probably go and use this primarily, uh, unless I, I needed something uh, something different. What, what have I done here? Let's. I was clicking the wrong thing. Um, obviously, you can play with the mic positioning, but uh, I guess this gives the best general idea. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting a, a release that is slightly longer and then shorter, so it's hard to make it like super precise, punching through in a sort of, um, I guess, more precise manner. So it's a bit sort of, the focus seems a bit scattered. But yeah, um, otherwise, texture of it sounds good. Seems a bit like I want it to be a bit more focused, have the a bit more sort of consistency in the, the length of the note and also the texture of it. really kind of lovely kind of organ organ like texture uh, low ensemble
yeah, this is uh, super beefy, sustains work. Uh, again, more like the flutes in a more flowy way. Lovely texture on the, the really quiet sustains. Okay, staccato. always find that my playing is shitty after my workouts like if I need to do something fast or percussive it's just like hands are gone uh, and, and again that's that that's the uh, official excuse really good I really like these shorts on the low ensemble uh, is there anything else here left contrabass ensemble <laughs> Really nice. Shitty playing, but hey, it sounds really good, really beefy. I'll be using that 100%. Cool. We did it. That was Vento. That was Vento indeed. Okay, so super impressed. Um, when I checked this out really briefly, uh, I, I I was sort of like, mm, like what, what's happening here? Because I was trying some of the traditional stuff. And again, I was probably feeling like the, the staccatos that weren't quite fitting, you know, what I was expecting. And then I did a few from the evolved thing and thought, okay, that's amazing. But I didn't hit some of the, some of my favorites there. So I was kind of like, yeah, that's, that's cool. But yeah, well, I guess we'll see in the demo. And, and we did see in the demo. Uh, it, it, it's really good. <laughs> I really love the evolved. Uh, the rhythmic, the ambient, the organic stuff, really good. And then from the traditional side, um, the beefy, beefy uh, woodwind low staccatos. And I, also the, the ensemble patch was uh, actually really, really nice and, and usable. So um, really cool stuff. Uh, strongly recommend, recommended to go and check this out. Uh, I do believe when this is coming out, the Heavy OC sale... Black Friday sale is still going, so if you happen to happen to be watching it right now, uh, go give it a look. Uh, again, I haven't been asked to say that. That's uh, simply me uh, happening to time this with that sale, uh, you know, intentionally for my part because I thought, well, now's as good of a time as any to put it out. And if it helps you make educated decisions about where you place your money, then that's great in my books but yeah uh, I think a good way of summarizing this is that it, it did rekindle my my love towards woodwinds and I think that's pretty high praise um, but yeah amazing stuff still in in, in that very same uh, style and 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 uh, in that same kind of pr production quality as as Novo and Forzo uh, so really pleasantly uh, surprised by what's in here I'm gonna be using a ton of that stuff in my music so uh, an interesting uh, offer for sure beautiful beautiful uh, soundscapes beautiful sound so hopefully that's useful for you if it is consider how do you pronounce it subscribing and liking and all that stuff it really helps the, the channel uh, let me know what you think in the comments uh, if you like it let heavy OST know that you like these demos and uh, that's it okay take care stay safe stay healthy i will see you next time 
finished.